Welcome to Talking About it. I'm John Griffith. And I'm JC Alvarez. And we have a very special guest who is, should be familiar to you because I know you never miss a show and uh, we love you for that. And uh, I want to welcome back Deborah Markowitz. Thank welcome. you. So happy to be here. Uh, always happy to have you. And it's like, you you talk about yourself off camera as being such an introvert, but you always have such a high energy level when you come here, and I love that. I know. Well, I'm so comfortable here. I love you guys. This is a new one. I love it. I love it. <sighs> You've got some great projects going on right now. It's like, you know, a lot of things that are actually making a lot of dents on the festival circuit mm -hmm. and stuff. So that must be really exciting and encouraging for you as a, as a filmmaker to be out there and really promoting some great projects. Oh, yeah. What's uh, something that's really recent that's happening right now that, that we should all be looking out for and maybe participating in? Okay. Well, actually, I guess what we want to participate in is a fundraiser that I'm doing on uh, May 15th, Monday, at mm -hmm. the historic Belmore Movies, right okay. at the Belmore train station um, off the Babylon line. But it's a, um, a pilot reading. It's, it's actually going to be a public reading of a series called Couple of Guys that I wrote and I'll be directing. Have some incredibly awesome actors in it. Sal Randino from The Get Down, Lucas Hassel from The Blacklist, uh, Jocelyn DeFries from Carla. Um, Aiden, um, oh, wow. The character is Aiden, but um, Karen Chin who from Phantom of the Opera. He's oh, one of the really? Phantoms. Wow. And Noel Yaturo and just all, all these people. And Deb Twist from Kick-Ass Roll. And, and they're all hilarious. So it's, it's kind of a drama, but it's very funny. And they're, <laughs> okay. they're just all a lot of fun. So uh, Karen is also going to sing, mm. it, which is going to be okay. wonderful. And um, uh, Lydia Sabosto and uh, J.C. Dreisen are also going to be singing. And um, it's only $15 a ticket, and it okay. should, it should be a blast. I'm looking forward to it. And with a cast like that, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, to, to sit down for like a, a pilot reading. Because you're raising money for this particular project, yes, correct? Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. as an indie filmmaker, you unfortunately have to do it all. So mm -hmm. whatever it takes, we've got to have comedy <laughs> fun, whatever it is, just Careful. give me right. money now so I stop. So I Don't stop put asking. that out there, whatever it takes. <laughs> That's very well, dangerous I'm around too old here. For that now. <laughs> Uh, there's a market for everything. There is a market. I agree. I heard about fuzzies. I could get a costume. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about the the project is called A uh, Couple of Guys, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. You wrote this story. I did was, write it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, what, what it, people can expect. It's morphed a lot. The thing I love about it, it's it's a love story, and um, it's a story about two gentlemen who meet later in life, and one has been married and has children, and he basically comes out in his late forties. And he's ready to start living. Mm. And, and his wife doesn't really know why he's left her. And um, he meets this other gentleman. Um, so Richard is, is the divorce attorney, very straight-laced. And he meets John Graham, who's this musician who's been on the road. He's done everything and everybody. And he's ready to settle <laughs> down. And then they meet each other in this record store. Oh, and boy. it's just kind of the way things morph into this relationship. So it's, it's supposed to be a pilot for a web series. Mm. Um, and it, it's just kind of how you know, they get to know each other. And it, you know, one who's very conservative and you know still hasn't come out of his shell yet and it's it's kind of like second chances it's you a know modern day american love story yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really it's it's wonderful how sort of like our community is being reflected in, in so many different ways across mediums and stuff yes and there's there's just so many stories to tell oh yeah that resonate with so many mm -hmm. people it's like all of a sudden it's like you know this is something that is a universal story it just so happens that it's a love story with that deals with two uh, same-sex mm -hmm. couple yeah, that's fantastic. Now, a couple of guys um, is not only the one project you're working on. You've also got some stuff going on uh, in Jersey. You got a, a project yeah, right. at uh, at the uh, Asbury Park uh, um, Film Festival out there. At the it's called the Hang On to Your Shorts yeah, Film Festival. Yeah, Hang On to Your Shorts Film Festival. How brilliant is that? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> There's so many film festivals, but that's yeah. a fun film festival. I've been there before, and I've won awards there, which is always a wonderful thing. Mm. And um, By Blood is is kind of more of a, a suspense film. Mm. It's a okay. short film, and um, so it's going to be screening there. And then that will be the last public screening. Okay. Um, and I believe I'm just going to pull it because I have too many new projects coming okay. out. So and I think we have the trailer for By Blood uh, lined up. So uh, can, can we take a look at the trailer for By Blood? Scary. See if it comes up it first. Scary. <laughs> to me, Uncle Vinny. I miss her. She really loves you. 14 years just flew by. Hey. They say that's what happens when you're happy. Just had a good life with you. I all screwed it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're getting it now. She's good, Jerry. Just give me your key. What are you, flagging me, Gus? Sometimes. You just know things. I do. I don't understand any of this. We're right in history. Her and I belonged together. You 
were married. Oh, no. Before. So what happened? <laughs> Everything. Everything. And nothing. Wow, that's, okay. that's, yeah. that's, that's intense. Really that's really I've intense. seen that before, and so yeah. we've talked about that before, but it, yeah. it always blows me away. Yeah. That it's one was a trip. Yeah, that was yeah, fun. It, it's really incredible how, how you actually, like we were talking about it before off camera, you, you work so many different genres. I mean, it's like, you know, you're working something that's a little more heartfelt, you're work, working on a love story, mm -hmm. and you also do these, like, you know, an intense, even horror genre stories. That, that must be a unique experience where you're sitting down and coming up with, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't even know where they all come from, um, <laughs> you know, which is a funny thing. If somebody's obviously paying me to write something, then, you know, they'll give me an outline or some ideas, but I still have to fill in, in the blanks. But um, By Blood was supposed to be, it was like a three-page project for a couple of hours, uh, actors to work with, and um, my husband, then boyfriend, was just going to shoot it with a new camera we got, and then all of a sudden it's 12 pages, and he goes, I, I get, get a DP. <laughs> Paul Mark, I'm not playing with this. Um, He's and like, then, I'm union. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then leaving, which, which is the, you know, that, that one came out of a dream where I just hmm. woke up at like 4.30 in the morning crying my eyes out. Oh, and trying to remember, what is this? And um, I started thinking about it, and it's like, oh, yeah, this needs to be a movie. And mm. I just kind of got up at 4.30 in the morning. By 7.30, I had the first draft, you know? So, uh, so inspiring. Yeah, that's so really everything just comes from whatever it, uh, it comes from. I just write it. You yeah, know? That's, that's, it's great to have that limitless resource. And that's inspiring, too, because like sometimes like you'll have people who kind of put themselves in boxes creatively. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, you're, you're successfully diversifying you yeah. know, your own genre. Yeah, I mean, some people say it's dangerous to do that because mm. you can't really classify me. Um, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> you yeah. know? Well, I mean, you have you have the the creativity to pull it off. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people who try that do not have that, and they're better off uh, not necessarily locked in a box, but mm -hmm. a little more focused on the box, with right. the occasional divergence outside of it. But you you can have a stack of boxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just you know what I don't I don't want to. I don't get up and say, oh, I want to write a thriller today because I wrote a love story yesterday. I just write kind of whatever comes mm -hmm. to me. Like, I'd love to do Last Taxi Driver, which is um, going to be up on Vimeo on Demand soon, but um, I really want to make that into a feature. Okay. But I have to get through about four other features before I can get to it, but um, because the story was so funny and we came up with some really good storylines, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, Bobby Clahesse from Blue Bloods has always called me, so when's Taxi Feature happening? <laughs> give, me, give me a few years. I have other things I'm working on. But, uh, Isn't it horrible to be so busy? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, my only yeah. problem is I don't have another 10 hours every single day because mm. I would just continuously make things, oh, you know? Do we have the trailer for Taxi? Is that what the, which I don't think I sent you. I don't think I sent okay. you Taxi. Okay. Waiting Room by Blood End. Leaving is what I sent leaving. you. I okay. didn't give you Taxi this time. Okay. So I think we had uh, Leaving set up I in the middle. So we're going to take a look at the, the trailer for Leaving now. You know it's not healthy to keep going back, Emily. It's not fair. You didn't do anything wrong. How can people heal if you don't give them the space they need to get on with their lives? I've given them space. I've given them too much space. I look around. Everything's changing in some way. Nothing lasts. Even stone starts to fade. I would never hurt my family. You think it's easy for your family? You popping in and out when you miss them? It wasn't your fault. I never thought it was. I just feel like they're not going to even remember me. Like, this is never real. I'm just going to disappear. You can't ever disappear. I just want to stay. Can I please just stay? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, what's, what's really... Uh, What's really fantastic, and, and what you're demonstrating is, is that there's there's really just an open field for for creatives to to really mm -hmm. do their work, and it's it's um it's really fantastic that you have an avenue like leaving is going to be available on video on demand, right? Mm -hmm. And also the last taxi driver you said is also right. Uh, leaving uh, is already on Vimeo on yeah. demand. If they go to I believe it's Deborah Markowitz Vimeo Deborah Markowitz, um, they'll be able to see Leaving by Blood as soon as it finishes its festival run, mm -hmm. um, which I think is May 25th. I think. Oh, June 25th? I don't know. What it's coming that? up. One of those yeah. 25th. But um, and I can find that on my site. But then that's going to come up shortly after Taxi, probably within a month after that. Um, so it'll be great to have, have the three. Mm -hmm. And I only pulled them. They've all won awards, which I'm really thankful mm -hmm. for that. 
Um, and, and Sal, by the way, from Leaving, was uh, he's on the Get Down now. So it's like, okay, I didn't start out with a name, but now I have a name in my film. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I'm lucky like that. But, um, you know, I had to really pretty much pull them because I have, like, three other films coming out. Mm -hmm. And plus I also cast and direct and pr produce and sometimes write for other people. So I'm waiting, you know, I'm, I'm working on those now. And it's... Uh, I feel the, bad. I feel like I'm abandoning them. Well, no. I mean, it's like it's a, it's not as if they're you're giving these films a platform. They're being seen by True. audiences, True. whether on the festival yeah. circuit right. or on video on demand, which I think is remarkable because it's sort of like you know you you kind of can bypass that, that whole demand of like the, if the studio system mm -hmm. or even like network television doesn't necessarily bite on your project, you're sort of like, well, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Right. It's, it's, you want know, people to see them. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and it's, yeah, and it's and they're getting wonderful recognition on the festival circuit, so it's kind of like you know it's it's great that there is this having this platform for creatives. So mm -hmm. it's like you know if you have the dream, dream it. Well, no, don't dream it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't listen to me. <laughs> listen to Deborah. She's doing it. <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really, it's so inspiring that, you know, it's, and it's like, you know, are the, all these projects that you do, are they all locally shot? Do you, like, shoot them all in? Most of know? the ones that I've done, all the ones that I've written have been pretty much in Nassau County. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's my house, my friend's house, you know, a park that's nearby, uh, whatever works, uh, you know, a hotel, anything mm -hmm. local. Um, I've done other films that have shot in other places, in the city, upstate, whatnot, depends on the director itself. You know, may I kind of, not that it's always going to be this way, mm. I may do a feature that needs to go somewhere sure, yeah, else, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. obviously as an independent filmmaker, the less expensive it is, the better, right, right. you know, so you can still make a quality film on, you know, not a lot of money. Mm. And well, the, these look great, and it's sort of like, what, what are some of the obstacles that an independent filmmaker can overcome? Well, oh, I overcome. Mean, yeah, I mean, it's right. like, you know, of course, we the money yeah. part is, 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 you is know, universal. is universal, yeah. but I mean, as far, as far as like, I mean, you're doing it, you're creating these films that are getting wonderful recognition on the festival circuit, they're available on video on demand, you're, you're creating films, mm -hmm. but as an independent filmmaker, what are some of the obstacles that you overcome to get your film project done? Um... Especially shooting, you know, getting Yeah, I mean, camp. it's the horror stories on set that always happen. I mean, I've almost always had really good sets, except that, um, like, for By Blood, um, we ordered a, a, a Ronin, um, which is almost like a steady cam, and so we set all our shots according to that, and the DP calls me the night before and said, the box is all dented, and we don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> and then, uh, and it didn't. And oh, no. um, so we had to redo all our shots on the, on the spot. And, oh, no. um I like to direct, as I assume most people do, by monitor, because you want to see exactly like it's going to look right. on the screen. We have three monitors. None of them worked with the camera. We rent. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, kill me. Um, so luckily, I had worked with the DP three times before, so I know he gets me. He knows what I want. But there's mm -hmm. one shot. I mean, people, nobody figures out what it is, but there's one shot I wanted that we couldn't get because he's, he's on the floor <laughs> like this with the camera, and I'm kind of next to him going, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we all went on to other projects, and four weeks later, okay, it's like, we don't have it. And so I had to do all kinds of creative, you know, editing with my editors mm -hmm. and ma to make it work, and I made everyone insane for a month. So there's that kind of <laughs> stuff that, that's, that's the daily stuff, and, and um, oh, my God, it's, it's just it's The just daily taxing. trials of filmmaking. So yeah. It's just oh, kind of yeah. like, you know, those are yeah. things that everyone can expect on a, yeah. on a set. Yeah. But how wonderful, do you, do you, you wear so many hats as... Mm -hmm. on it. Do you think that that's sort of like the way that it's going now? Like, if, if people who want to make successful films, mm -hmm. should they be multitaskers? Should it they depends be in if they can do it. Yeah. You know, I know people that, that are just, you know, um, amazing writers and probably shouldn't direct. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I almost kind of think writing directing sort of goes hand in hand. Um, but you have to be careful about don't hire all your friends just because they're your friends because maybe they can't act. <laughs> and so you, yeah, you know, I've seen a few what do you yeah. mean by and, that? And they may not realize it. I mean, <laughs> they may not realize that. But you know, running also the Long Island mm. National Film Act, so I see a lot of films, and I know good actors. I know how to pick that. So I am, I do well at casting. But you know, and you'll watch a film that has all these great actors, and then obviously you know this is somebody's relative, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, and so it's it's really important. Blooper reel, blooper yeah, reel. Yeah, for obstacles, if you if you if you can pick out great actors, fine. And I don't know how you know that you can't. Mm. You know, so you, you kind of have to figure out what your strengths are. Yeah. You know, are you a good producer? Are you, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I've been lucky, you know, um, but I also work my butt right. off, you know, to, to mm. be able to do the things I do. If uh, the only reason I probably really direct is the fact that I want to make sure the stories look the way sure. they should, yeah. that yeah, they're yeah, told yeah. well. Um, I may not direct yeah. everything I write. I'm um, writing a couple of um, uh, features for people, and um, I may or may not, if I don't like the talent they have attached, I'm not going to do it. Because I, I, 
I have, you want to, you have to. Um, You're protecting your brand. Yeah, yeah. and you want to also make sure that you fulfill the other person's vision like I did with Chosen, um, mm -hmm. that, that's just hitting the festival circuit now. We're just trying to submit it, but um, Shari uh, Goldstein-Germanski is the writer, Kathy Moriarty's in it, Arash Shmoktar, it's a brilliant story and it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. And, and um, but I had to make sure everything I wanted to do, it's like, this is what I think, what do you think? And luckily, pretty much, we gelled on just about everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, what if you don't? You know, you have to sometimes give and just make sure that you're fulfilling their vision while you're being true to yourself as an artist. You know, so it's, it's luckily it's worked out really well, but there's always that fear that what if we disagree, right. you know? Well, that's a wonderful, I guess that's the wonderful compromise of being an independent filmmaker that it really becomes a collaborative on-set experience as mm -hmm. opposed to like, you know, someone that's married to a network or studio where they're kind of like yeah, guided by that. the big hands. That's yeah. what I yeah. love about it. I mean, you know, if I ever get to that point where I'm making millions of bucks, I always said this, <laughs> if I get to the point of making millions of bucks, I want a small studio division, a small film division so I can make all the films I want to make the way I want to make them because mm -hmm. you lose a lot of that control once people start putting the money in. Yeah. You, right. you have to, you yeah. know. You just have to give them some consideration. Every, every money person has an idea of where the story should go. And, yeah. and, and sometimes they're right, but sometimes mm -hmm. you got to. I mean, one thing you have to be open to also is to listening. And that's probably one of the hardest what obstacles. What was that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love him. I can't resist that. I can't resist that. <laughs> one of the obstacles is to listen, but to be true to yourself. Because I, I have a few go-to filmmakers, uh, mm -hmm. Lucas Hassel, who I adore, David Spaltrow. Uh, there's just a number of filmmakers that I will go to them, look at this, and let me know what you think. And I may not agree with everything they say, but sometimes they'll see something I didn't. I'll yeah. be like, oh. Collaboration. You know? Or if there's yeah. a joke I like that everybody hates, and right. I put it in anyway, nobody laughs, it's like, oh, I should have listened. But you know, you, you have to know enough that my style is not their style. Yeah. And that doesn't mean it's not going to work. You know, So it's, it's um, but I like to get a lot of feedback so that maybe there's something I hadn't thought of, maybe there's something that will tighten it up mm -hmm. that I didn't think about. But, um, and, and people that, I mean, one thing that I've had them say to me is it's, it's good that you're cool with feedback, you know, that you, because yeah. I said I wouldn't ask if, if I didn't want to know, you know. <laughs> and, and don't ask me. <laughs> people ask me, I said, I'm going to be honest, so really please don't ask me unless, I, I will be as polite as I can. Right. But, you know, I'm going to ask you something that might make your film better, you know, and you don't have to take it, but, you know, don't yell at me. <laughs> then don't ask if you don't really want right. to know the truth, because I will tell you the truth. So. Yeah, well, I mean, questions are, are usually good, but sometimes yeah. the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. um, you have uh, one, one more project that, that you wanted to talk about. The Waiting Room, I'm so yeah. excited. This is my latest film, um, I Call the Waiting Room, was part of the 72-hour challenge. Um, which I will probably never do again, <laughs> but I'm so thankful I did it because I think with the least amount of money and the least amount of time, it's probably my favorite film. Mm. Okay. Okay. If you mm. want to show well, that first. Th th yeah. uh, no, we're going to go out oh. with it. So okay. we're going we're to build up to it and then okay. we're going to say sure, goodbye. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, uh, 72 hour challenge. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's remarkable. Yeah. Mm. Now it's not, they changed it so it's 72 hours to shoot it. However, we only had enough money for one day. Um, and then it snowed the day before. We had the blizzard, so we couldn't have shot the first day anyway. But it wouldn't have mattered. We only had money for one day. So, but to be clear, you shot the film in 72 hours. We which shot means it in You had the script, and you hours. had the cast, you had everything set to go, and then you just yeah. went 72 hours You have a week to write shooting. the script. Okay. Okay. Um, but I wrote it in two hours, because that's it. how I do everything. Because um, <laughs> you're superwoman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then yeah. we actually managed to get together before the shoot was phenomenal, um, because we got to actually read, have the actors read together. Awesome. I can't believe we got everybody on the same day. Um, and, and in it, I've got um, Karen Sheehan, who was one of the Phantoms from Phantom of the Opera, who's in a couple of guys, mm -hmm. too. Um, so he's in it. Jennifer Giles, uh, who's, she was the executive producer on this. Um, and she's an, em an Emmy Award winning uh, actress as well. Okay. And um, Noelle Yaturo, who's been in every one of my mm -hmm. films. And uh, Heather Br Bertino Scanlon, uh, who's also a, um, a filmmaker. And she's in it. And oh my God, please don't. Oh, Justin, Justin Torrenti uh, Wilson, Justin L. Wilson, okay. who is hilarious. Wow. He is amazing, but he came he and one other person came with Jennifer and they asked me if I would direct it and I said well I want to see the actors first because if I don't gel with the actors I don't, don't want to do it mm -hmm. and, and I want to see them naked money. yeah you'll see them did all you say that, did you say that and I want to see them naked <laughs> well, I'll show you my phone I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> I just have to be a cast director. I'm sorry. I want to see the actors and I want to see them naked. <laughs> there's a shirtless scene. I got to make sure. I'm <laughs> okay. Um, you know, but, uh, I don't actually want you to be in my films. I will have shirtless males, but I don't really want you to be in my films. And, um, you know, as, as one of the people couldn't make it, so I filled in with a couple of my actor friends and they were so amazing. Oh, wow. Because it's very comedic, but it's very mm -hmm. dramatic. And um, they all 
just floored me. They were, they were all so amazing on every level. I'm and excited. I'm sitting there going, oh my yeah. God, look at this. And I had to spend one of the scenes like this so I wouldn't cut, oh, just well. break up laughing. Um, <laughs> and we're in the shot. <laughs> but it's it came out, and when we showed it to everybody, it was like, this is like really good, isn't and it? I said, it is, right? And you did it is in it? 72 no, it's, hours. It's, yeah, and that's, that's got to be an amazing <laughs> challenge. And, uh, so we're challenged with time right now. So it's like, uh, we're going to show we're going to show the clip in a second, okay. but uh, we're going to say goodbye to you in the interim. So, but you're always welcome here. I am so thrilled that you took the time to, to come and visit us again. Very inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah, you thank so much. You. I should come back with the crew from the waiting room, the cast from the waiting room. Oh, absolutely. Room. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd love this. They're a absolutely. lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be back in the big studio by July. So, <laughs> okay. so definitely, definitely always welcome. Thank you. And we're going to take one last look at the trailer. Okay. You are expecting a visitor. Really? This is Janet. Tim, who is... I am Tim's wife, Anne. It's lovely to meet you. You left. For good. I'm sorry. We separate when we go to Earth to learn our lessons, but when we leave the waiting room, we become one again.